Hi, so today we're going to be swapping the PCB from a hard drive for data recovery. Uh, now in a previous video I showed this one and it has a short uh, in it somewhere and um, I'm not quite sure how to fix that itself. So a more common approach and it's a lot easier is to uh, buy a new board like this on eBay for $30 and um, unfortunately it's not as easy as just swapping this, uh, this board here. Um, there are some parts we have to transfer over to the new board. Sometimes you need to replace the BIOS chip that's on it. Um, now, you can identify this chip uh, by the chip ID. It usually has uh, eight pins like this one here. Um, and it, it'll be called like a flash ROM or, or um, something to do with memory like that. Um, but oftentimes in the eBay search results of these, you see in the image, they, they circle a certain component and even label it as BIOS or, you know, they point it out just to, to give you some help. Now the reason you have to swap these over is because they have, uh, they contain some calibration information and uh, sometimes hardware encryption keys. So the drive just either won't work without it or it's just going to show up as a blank drive. Um, so what we'll need for this is a pair of tweezers hot air rework station, um, which isn't entirely necessary. You could get away with using a, a regular soldering iron um, and some something called chip quick um, to keep the solder hot for longer. Uh, you could just look that up. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, flux. Um, I'm going to be using flux ju just to keep it clean. Um, it prevents the solder from jumping between pads and just kind of has them stick to their own pads. So that's why I'm going to be using it, but it's not entirely necessary either. Um, it's probably a good idea to start off with the new board. One, we don't care about this chip. It's as good as garbage um, once we remove it from the board. And two, it's pretty hard to damage these boards just from heating them up. So um, you're pretty much risking nothing on the board except for that chip. Now um, let's get to it. Just focus most of the heat on that chip itself. We don't want to get too many other things hot. And then it's safe to just uh, grab your tweezers, hold onto that chip, and just kind of wiggle the board while you got the heat on it. Now I'm just going to clean those uh, pads there, remove all that old solder off of it. Not really necessary, but um, just makes things easier later. And then we can take some of this flux and just put some of that on there. Just kind of spread that around just a, just a little bit. And then we're going to tin those pads. Just putting a even amount of solder on all those. And now the old chip, make sure you don't get them mixed up. Let's put that aside. So now we're going to remove the uh, old chip here. Just put a little bit of um, flux on there as well. Doesn't hurt. Just gonna heat that up, same way. comes. And we're just going to place that exactly how it was on the new board. Just, uh, doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to uh, 
have all the, the individual pins on each pad of solder. And um, now we're just going to heat it again. And it's a good idea to kind of press down on the chip while you do that. I actually have that a little off center. So let me heat that up again. I'm just going to push it over. And um, it's a little better. I'm just going to try one more time. It's hard to see at this angle with the camera tripod in the way. Lightly push on it while I heat it up. And there we go. It's in place. Now you want to heat it for as little time as possible um, to prevent damaging the chip. But um, these things can take some pretty high temperatures as long as it's not for a long time. So let me just uh, get a close up this chip here. So this is the end result. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, it just has to have all those pins on their individual pads. Um, so anyway, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.